Right here we are in the workshop where I'm going to take you through the uh, safety procedures and some vocabulary of not only the bandsaw but also the drill press. So here is the main bandsaw here in our workshop. Um, it has several different parts to it, but first I'm going to show you a um, <clears throat> go through a little bit of vocabulary. Um, the first thing you need to understand is that the bandsaw is used to cut both straight and curved lines in stock. Um, <clears throat> straight lines, of course, um, can be cut you know by just pushing it straight through. Curved lines can be cut by gently pushing um, your stock through the uh, blade as we'll illustrate here in just a second. Um, what you have to understand about some parts of the saw, I'm going to move the camera around here as we do a little bit of a, of a tour. The switch, which is right here, will control the motor. And the motor mounted right here next to the saw on this unit. There's a pulley in the back which connects to the inside of the saw which makes it turn around. So this, this, the uh, function of the switch of course is to turn on and off the motor so it basically controls the motor on the saw just like this. Here it turn on and press stop to turn it off. Pretty simple. Okay the cutting tool on the bandsaw is of course the bandsaw blade and in order to have a better understanding of how exactly this machine works, what you need to make sure that you understand is how the machine is put together. So I'm going to zoom out here, pull back, I'm going to show you a few different parts of the saw. So when I open up this top door, when I do that I'm actually going to unplug the saw whenever I work on it. It's always a good idea to do that. Okay, so the blade is actually like a big rubber band, only it's not rubber, it's actually metal. It goes all the way around these two wheels. When I pan down here, you'll see that. So there's a wheel here in the bottom, a wheel here in the top, and there's one continuous band going all around. That is the bandsaw blade. As we push in a little closer here, you'll be able to see how the bandsaw actually comes through our cutting table here. All right, so the bandsaw blade, obviously you need to be careful as you cut through any of your stock because of the fact that with any side movement of the blade, you can imagine the kind of forces that this will go in under, or this will, um, this will undergo as it spins around rapidly a couple thousand times per minute. So uh, it's very important that you just have an idea of the geometry behind how this works. It's not just a straight blade like it's in a circular saw or something like that. So with every power tool, it obviously comes with um, very specific precautions you have to, to worry about. Okay, so for the supporting of the stock, that would be the table, and that's this right here. Uh, this table is made out of cast iron, so it's very, very um, solid in its design. Um, what you have to remember about when you cut um, is that you may need to make sure that the uh, blade, or we need a mechanism, I should say, to make sure that the blade doesn't wander back and forth. And that's the job of this right here, and that's called the blade guide. Zoom in here to give you a little bit closer look at it. The blade guide, and there's a blade guide here at the top of the table, and then one underneath the table you can't see. The blade guide is just that. It's meant to uh, make sure that it guides the blade so that the blade doesn't wander back and forth or go front to back. If I come over here to the side, you're going to see that the blade can go forward and back as well and we want to minimize that movement obviously. We want it to be as, as steady as, it, <clears throat> as we can get it while it's cutting. Okay, now the other things you need to know about the uh, blade guide is the fact that it needs to be set at a certain height when you are actually cutting. So I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so you can better see this example. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a simple piece of wood here. And this happens to be just a piece of scrap I have sitting around the shop here. Just a piece of one by board, three quarter inches. And you can see that I've got quite a little gap here. Not a huge gap, but there is definitely a gap here between the blade guard, the bottom of the blade guard, and the top of my stock. So, what I want to do, I'm going to zoom back out here, and we're going to just peek around the corner of the back of this saw, and as we do that, you're going to see that there is a handle here. Now, if I just loosen this handle up, you'll hear it drop, like that which isn't necessarily a good thing, but what ended up happening was this just dropped right down to the workpiece. So it's going to take two hands for me to hold this up. I'm going to loosen that up. I'm going to pull it up a little bit so I have about a quarter of an inch gap between the bottom of my blade guard and the top of the workpiece. So it's really important that you have that. Otherwise, the odds of your blade wandering around are very good and we don't want that. I want to keep this blade as steady as possible. Make sure I snug it up. As you can see, I've had just a little bit of clearance, about a quarter inch. So obviously with your cars, you're going to have a thicker piece um, to worry about. So um, you would raise the blade guard up even more for that and we'll demonstrate that in another cut. Okay? Um, the Margin of safety is the minimum distance from the blade your hands can be. And what I want to point out is this little circle that's been scribed onto the table. You can see it's, it's kind of a grayish white circle. That is exactly three inches from the blade to the outside edge of that circle, actually inside edge of that circle. So I've drawn a radius of three inches from that point all the way around. And the reason we've done that, and as you come around the side here, you can see that it's a complete circle around the back of the saw too. The reason we've done that is because once you start cutting with this saw, you need a visual reminder as to how close your hand could be. You never want your hands, while of course this blade is running, inside of that circle. That's your margin of safety, three inches. You should never have your hands either directly in line with the blade, or right in front of the blade. You never want it directly in front of the blade. Now there's going to be times where you have it like this, that's fine, but you never want it right in front of the blade, for obvious reasons. If you were cutting and your hand slips, you could go right into the blade, and obviously that would mean not too good things for your hands. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up, and as you can see, as I have it labeled, the push stick is a very important piece. And what the push stick does is the push stick essentially allows us to get some more fine detailed work into the actual workpiece. Um, so as I'm bringing my piece of stock here, which I'll show you in just a few moments, into the cut, you're going to want to use your push stick to make any fine adjustments. And again, I'll show you that in a second. But this is also good for clearing out um, your um, your workpiece as well or for any uh, any uh, waste cuts that you have.